welcome to the next module of uh, design to prevent the fire and explosion. And this uh, module we will discuss uh, the general design methodology to prevent the electrostatic ignition. We will discuss about the relaxation that uh, how the charge is uh, with the enhanced uh, inlet area uh, we can reduce the impact of uh, static charge. We will discuss about uh, the bonding and the grounding, what is the role of uh, dip piping in uh, the uh, static electricity generation. Increasing the conductivity with the additives, so we will discuss about it, how we can increase the conductivity. Explosion proof housing and designing or layouting, we will discuss about this. So, uh, let us have first uh, uh, aspect that is a general design methodology to prevent the electrostatic ignition. And uh, usually methods generally used while handling the liquid that is the reducing the rate of the charge generation must reduce the uh, flow rate. So, that uh, the, the generation and accumulation of uh, static charges uh, would be minimized. Then increasing the rate of uh, charge relaxation. So, relaxation tanks after filters enlarge section of pipe before entering the tank. So, once you enlarge the section then the charge density would be on the lower side. So, the impact of destructiveness of that particular charge would be on the lower side. So, uh, methods generally used when we handle the powders, especially in some certain industrial establishments, the, you need to handle the powders and in the previous module we have seen that while we are handling the powder, then there are prominent charge uh, chances of uh, generation of uh, static electricity. So, uh, they include the charge reduction by means of a low energy discharge. So, when dangerous discharges cannot be eliminated, then prevent the possibility of an ignition by maintaining oxidant level below the combustible level or inerting or by maintaining the fuel level below the LFL or above the UFL. Now, remember this above the, uh, the UFL is again a very undesirable situation because at any point of time there may be a chance that it may reach the range of LFL and UFL. So, it can uh, create a dangerous problem. So, uh, it is always advisable to maintain the low uh, oxidation level or you, you, uh, you can see the knowledge of LFL, so that it can be below the, the LFL range. Now, there are certain special design features for the prevention of electrostatic ignition. Sparks usually they are prevented by grounding and bounding. So, grounding and bounding they are very useful and a common phenomena for elimination of uh, the hazard of electrostatic ignition. Now, uh, prevent, they prevents the two metallic objects fr uh, from having the different potential. They prevent the existence of uh, isolated metal parts or objects. So, propagating brush discharge uh, are prevented by keeping non-conductive surfaces or coating thin enough to uh, or conductive enough to have a breakdown voltage roughly below 4 kilo volts. They are also prevented by uh, keeping the metallic backing grounded to eliminate accumulation of high density charge on interface and counter charge on non-conductive surface. Conical pile discharges, uh, they are prevented by increasing the conductivity by um, uh, addition of certain additives, we will discuss in due course of time. Uh, by decreasing the charge rate below around uh, say 0.5 kilogram per second or by using the containers with a volume less than 1 meter cube. Now, the most effective, remember the most effective way is inerting. So, if your inerting is efficient, then definitely you can avoid the, the uh, hazard of electrostatic ignition. So, brush discharges, they are prevented by keeping the non-conductive surface thin enough or conductive enough to have a breakdown voltage that is usually less than 4 uh, kilo volt. Non-conductive coating with the thickness having the greater, uh, uh, greater than 2 mm, millimeter, however, capable of brush discharge even with the U, UD less than 4 kilo volt. Now, to prevent the brush discharge, a thickness of uh, around 2 millimeter is necessary. Again, uh, repeating it again that the most effective way is inerting. 
Now relaxation. Sometimes relaxation, uh, because uh, the charge density is a very crucial point. So relaxation is uh, one of the most effective, or you can say, the effective tool for to minimize the effect of uh, uh, electrostatic ignition. So when you are pumping fluid into a vessel through a pipe uh, on the on top of the vessel like this, top of the vessel, the separation process produces a streaming current. Uh, like this, which is the basis of charge buildup. Now, it is possible uh, to substantially reduce this electrostatic hazard by adding an enlarged section of pipe just before entering the tank. It is just like this. You can have this enlarged section and you may have the piping like this. So, this is uh, the enlarged section. And if you compare with this, this, this is the enlarged section. So, the resistance time in this relaxation section of pipe should be about twice the relaxation time determining using this tau is equal to epsilon r epsilon naught upon gamma c. Another uh, important uh, aspect is bonding and grounding. The voltage difference uh, between two conductive material is reduced to 0 by bonding together. Now, in other words, one end of uh, a conducting wire to one of the material and bonding the other end to the second material. So, when comparing the set of bonded materials, uh, the set may have different voltages. The voltage difference between set is reduced to 0 by bonding each set to ground and that is uh, by grounding. So, bonding and grounding reduces the voltage of an entire system to ground level or a 0 voltage. Now, this is uh, the pictorial uh, explanation of uh, this bonding and the grounding. Now, here we have a container which is uh, duly grounded. Now, this is uh, the container and these two, uh, the, the, these bolt clamp uh, type A and type B both are joined together and this is uh, the best example of uh, bonding and grounding. Now, here the grounding, this is uh, the container and you are discharging certain uh, liquid to a small open uh, pail. Now, here you can ground it or you can uh, building the static grounding bus through which you can discharge or you can eliminate the charge, whatever charge being generated, it can be eliminated. Now, here there are two, uh, you, you can see the, this is uh, this is the bonded with uh, these two clamps. This one is bonded. So, and the charge discharge is connected to this bus wire. So, that you can eliminate the hazard of electrostatic um, ignition. Now, this is again a very common uh, phenomena that is accumulated charge remain in non-conductive and in non-grounded vessel. If uh, you are filling uh, a vessel, with uh, any any uh, uh, fluid. Now, this if it is not properly being grounded or bound, uh, bonded, then the charge will remain to the surface of this particular vessel. And whenever this particular vessel will come into contact to certain favorable conditions, then a spark may generate it. So, be careful and be adopt the concept of grounding. Sometimes you may experience uh, there are certain zones, uh, those who, who have, uh, who have uh, the accumulation of uh, uh, these electrostatic charges uh, and sometimes th they are unnoticed. Like this, uh, you are having a non-conductive line, a pipeline where the charge is accumulated at the surface. Similarly, you are having uh, maybe a conductive line or maybe um, uh, some uh, non-conductive line, the charge is accumulated at the sur surface of uh, these flanges. So, whenever the favorable condition achieves, then definitely they may be in a position to produce the spark. This is uh, again the very best example of uh, uh, streaming uh, charge effect. Now, this uh, particular uh, lorry contains uh, a flammable liquid. Let us have a, a, some practical example of a, a petrol 
or a motor spirit this uh, logic carries the motor spirit so during the um, the transit or during the transportation from uh, the depot to the petrol pump it may have certain accumulated charges or either at the inner part like this of the surface or uh, over the fluid surf uh, 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 fluid surface now when it tends to discharge this uh, uh, particular flammable liquid to the storage arena of a petrol pump then there are certain metal surfaces or metallic surfaces then it may have a favorable condition for the generation of a spark now during the trans uh, transfer you cannot avoid the formation of uh, certain vapors because they are the inherent property to, to attributed to the vapor pressure then the spark may may be generated and this spark may have the sufficient amount of energy so that it can blown off the entire petrol station or a petrol pump that's why to neutralize this streaming charge and to neutralize the things you must ground uh, this particular uh, filling uh, station or filling pump whenever you are having either you pre ground it or you uh, during the process of unloading this particular uh, uh, tank cart you may ground it in a continuous fashion now uh, another aspect is the dip pipe usually this is an extended line or sometimes called a dip leg or dip pipe this reduces the electric charge that accumulates when liquid is allowed to free fall while using dip pipe care must be taken to prevent the siphoning back when the inlet flow is stopped uh, the method is to place a hole in the dip pipe near the top of the vessel another technique is to use an angle iron instead of a dip pipe and let the liquid flow down to an angle iron now here is the best example that how dip legs prevent uh, the free fall and accumulation of uh, static charges so before we discuss uh, this one let's have that what happened um, at the startup suppose uh, i am having this uh, vessel to be filled with the flammable liquid and one option is that i am flowing the liquid from the top like this so what happens there may be a chance of generation of uh, um, charge at the inner lining and over the surface of uh, this liquid because they are having the larger area now with the uh, concept of uh, dip leg here you can see that this uh, this particular dip leg is just uh, a few inch or uh, um, a few distance away from the bottom of this one so by this way whenever the liquid is coming out the the charges for uh, uh, electrostatic charge generation the possibilities are on the lower side so by this way you can minimize the generation of electrostatic charge or static ch charge build up now one problem is there and that is the that problem is attributed to the siphoning because whenever this liquid is coming to at this level and suppose this particular thing is connected to some other vessel which is maybe the filling vessel then there may be a chance of reverting it, it back to the uh, this particular vessel to avoid this uh, siphoning back uh, aspect you may put a hole mm, to break the siphon now remember whenever you are filling there may be a chance that uh, uh, the liquid may come out from this uh, hole and it may create again the problem of generation of uh, static charge so whenever you are encountering such type of a problem then you may have uh, another uh, remedy for this one you may put an angle iron which may be suitably be grounded or bounded and you can put the flow in such a uh, manner that it is having the reduced flow and it will align to this uh, 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 angle iron bar so that the generation of static charges may be minimized 
So these are the couple of uh, methodology through which uh, you can uh, prevent the free fall and accumulation of static charge by the dip leg concept. Now there is another possibility of uh, a spark so or uh, spark uh, uh, charge transfer this is a vessel filling operation. Now there are three aspects one is this one. Another one is that uh, at the outer periphery you may generate the charge and third one is that how we can reduce the impact of this generation of spark. So this, fi this figure particular figure depicts that how we can minimize this uh, uh, the, uh, the, the charge transfer and how we can minimize the effect of uh, spark generation. Another uh, uh, methodology is uh, to increase the conductivity uh, by the addition of uh, additives. So the conductivity of uh, non-conducting organic materials uh, can sometimes be increased using the additives. They are called the anti-static additives. And examples of anti-static additives include the water and a polar solvent uh, such as uh, alcohol, etc. Water is effective only when it is uh, soluble in uh, offending liquid because an insoluble phase gives an additional source of separation and charge build up. Sometimes uh, you need to encounter uh, the problem of handling solid without uh, with the flammable vapors and sometimes the handling solid without flammable vapors. So, um, here uh, again you need to adopt the proper bonding and grounding aspect like here you can see these two are bonded each other. Now here uh, before we go into detail um, this uh, particular solid is being filled with this uh, funnel to this uh, uh, particular reactor. So uh, while transferring this uh, solid material through this uh, um, uh, hopper or a react, uh, uh, funnel to this reactor there may be a chances of a generation of uh, um, static charge. Now as an engineer you must find out that what are the possible danger zone. One zone is this uh, container itself, another zone is uh, this funnel itself and third zone is this reactor itself. So you can see that this particular uh, uh, vessel is properly bonded with this funnel like this and this adjoining is properly grounded. So, by this way you can minimize the hazard of uh, both this and this. In the next aspect uh, while we are you are transferring this material to this uh, reactor obviously there would be certain uh, generation of uh, certain elect um, electrostatic charge then this vessel is again grounded to minimize the effect of this electrostatic charge. So, you must find out that what are the crucial area where you need to pay a proper attention. Now charging the solid with the non-grounded conductive shoots they can result in a built up of charge that is why they have put this ground bonding and grounding. Now this charge can accumulate and finally produce a spark this may ignite the dispersed dust. So, to avoid this type of thing you must find out the crucial area. Sometimes uh, you may need to handle another uh, scenario uh, where you cannot perform this type of activity which we have discussed in the previous slide. Then you need to adopt the concept of uh, inerting. Now here you are handling with the flammable vapors. So when you are continuously filling this uh, uh, these solids to this uh, particular reactor, this is a solid liquid reaction. So, in that particular case the, the chances of generation of uh, uh, charge are on the higher side and sometimes you may not be in a position to, to uh, ground it properly. In that particular case you may need to have a proper supply line for inerting so that whatever vapors being generated or whatever the combustible mixture is being generated at the surface of this particular uh, liquid. Uh, it may be properly inerted so that it cannot uh, ignite because uh, remember if you are not attempting uh, this type of uh, thing then uh, this uh, the, the vapors or a dust whatever is there the, they may uh, form a flammable mixture 
and you are having sufficient electrostatic charge built up within the vessel and at any point of time the spark may generate and the entire vessel may explode. To minimize this particular effect, you need to have certain supply lines for inerting. So, uh, uh, usually uh, uh, there are certain advisories and you know that here you are also having uh, the solid which is being filled to this uh, particular reactor, it is properly bonded and ground, grounded. So, uh, usually uh, uh, this type of things is being used when you are not in a position to have the additives, you are not in a position to have a proper grounding methodology, then go for inerting. Uh, when you are uh, acclimatized or you are bound to work under the such scenario, then definitely you cannot overlook the uh, importance of explosion proof equipment and instruments. So, all it is advisory that all electrical devices they are having uh, inherent ignition sources. So, keeping in view of this fact, you must design the methodology through which you will use the, the, those explosion proof equipment and instruments. So, special design features uh, are required to prevent the ignition of a flammable vapor and dust. The fire and explosion hazard is directly proportional to the number and type of electrically powered, powered devices uh, in a process area. So, process area are divided usually in two major type environment XP and non XP that is the explosion proof and a non explosion proof. Now, if flammable uh, uh, material might be present at time in an area, it is designated XP that is explosion proof uh, required and if not present uh, uh, even under abnormal condition, it is designated as non explosion proof required area. So, that means you can avoid the installation of uh, such safety devices. So, for non explosion proof required designated area, open flames, heated elements and other sources of ignition uh, may be present because you can work it upon. The housings uh, are not designed to prevent the flammable vapors and gases from entering, but designed to withstand an internal explosion and prevent the combustion from spreading beyond the inside of the enclosure. Now, how we can classify this uh, explosion proof housing? In this uh, slide, we will discuss that classification are usually defined as uh, on the basis of uh, national electrical code that is based on uh, United States um, uh, federal law. And this is a function of uh, the nature and degree of a process hazard within a particular area. So, rating methods this includes the class 1, class 2, class 3 groups, uh, class 3 and uh, uh, groups uh, from A to G and uh, divisions 1 or 2. So, class 1 includes the location where flammable gases or uh, vapors are present, class 2 same for the combustible dust, class 3 hazard locations where combustible fibers uh, or dust are present, but not likely to be in, in uh, suspension. So, that you can designate the different area of plant in different classes. Now, uh, the groups they are designated to pre uh, the presence of uh, specific chemical type and the chemicals that are grouped have uh, equivalent hazards like group A acetylene or equivalent, group B hydrogen ethylene, group C carbon monoxide hydrogen sulphide, group D butane ethane ethyl alcohol, group E aluminum dust, group F carbon black, group G fluor. Now, the divisions uh, because uh, there are two type of divisions. So, div division designations are categorized in relationship to the probability of uh, the material being within the flammable or explosive region. Division 1 probability of ignition is high that is flammable concentrations are normally present. Division 2 the hazardous only abnormal conditions. Uh, uh, maybe thermal runaway reactions or a temperature based reactions etcetera. Flammable materials are normally contained in closed containers or systems. Now, how we can design an explosion proof area? So, first thing is come into our picture is ventilation. So, proper ventilation we have discussed this uh, ventilation tool in uh, interstellar hygiene. So, uh, proper ventilation is uh, one of the method used to prevent the fires and explosion. 
the purpose of uh, ventilation is uh, to dilute the explosive vapors with air to prevent the explosion and to confine the hazardous flammable mixture both dilution and a local ventilation applicable for plant inside the building there are certain open air plants so open air plants are recommended because the average wind velocities are high enough uh, to safely dilute the volatile chemical leaks if any and that may exist uh, within a plant so this is uh, one of the favorable sometimes uh, it may create a problem of uh, unconfined vapor cloud explosion so although safety precautions are always practiced to minimize leaks accidental releases uh, from pump seals and other potential releases are the point uh, under the consideration of uh, this head there are certain plants inside building so local ventilation uh, obviously purge boxes elephant trunks etc you can use dilution ventilation when um, many small points of possible leaks they exist and you can use the dilution ventilation usually need of ventilation is that aid in uh, 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 saving life or assist in the, uh, the saving life sometimes uh, assist in uh, suppressing fire assists in the reducing the property damage uh, so that's why the ventilation is uh, extremely important now um, while uh, assisting in uh, saving life this improves the visibility allows for the fast because sometimes uh, uh, when there is a leak of any flammable or any kind of uh, hazardous vapor the atmosphere or area may become a little bit hazy so ventilation may increase the visibility allows for faster location of unconscious uh, victims so that you can approach to them easily simplifies and expedite uh, the rescue operation because the uh, once the visibility is clear then you can easily approach to them makes condition safer for firefighters and victims now aids in uh, suppressing uh, fire in fire attack or extinguishment uh, the removes the smoke gases and heat from building facilitates entry of fire fighters because the visibility is on the higher, higher side reduces the obstacles that Uh, hinder the firefighters uh, increases the visibility for quicker location of uh, seat of fire uh, in fire control they reduces the mushrooming uh, uh, they reduces the flash over potential they reduces the uh, the backdraft potential and controls of fire spreads etc they are helpful in reducing the the property damage that permits the rapid extinguishment obviously the ventilation is uh, very prominent in this aspect reduces the water and heat smoke damage confines fire to an area allows salvage operation and fire control to take place uh, concurrently now there are various factors uh, those who determine the type of uh, ventilation that is uh, the building and uh, building type and design confined building and confined building etc number of size of wall opening how much you require number of stories and floors number of staircases shaft dumb waiters duct roof opening etc because these are the certain guiding factors for this one availability of exterior fire escapes and exposure involvement so these are the certain factors those who determine what kind of or what type of ventilation you require now ventilation opening location and size factors they depend on the availability of uh, natural opening because obviously uh, for this opening you need not to pay any penny fire location what is the fire location building construction of what type what is the wing direction although it is not uh, constant throughout uh, fire phase building condition what is the building condition sometimes uh, building is quite old and because of the fire it may collapse down or uh, it may create a problem sometimes when uh, ventilation may initiate uh, certain vibration which is uh, uh, destruct which may be destructive for building building contents what are the contents inside the building what is the roof type uh, what is the effect on fire uh, what is the effect on exposure Uh, attack crews re re readiness ability to protect exposures what is the size and the location etc so these are the various things which you need to look after so in nutshell in this particular module uh, uh, we summarize the things that ventilation removes uh, smoke heat toxic gases from burning building hence can save lives and reduce property damage 
Flashback backdraft is caused by the addition of oxygen rich air to a smoke filled and a fuel rich atmosphere. Convection controls uh, the spread of a produ uh, product of a combustion. In convection, heated gas expands and become less dense than the cooler gas, so uh, you can minimize the problem. The proper ventilation includes uh, uh, improved visibility, removal of heat steam, reduction of backdraft. Convection currents carry smoke, superheated gases to uninvolved areas, so firefighter must be able to recognize when ventilation is needed and firefighter must evaluate all pertinent safety issues and avoid unnecessary risk. So, when working on a roof, firefighters should have two safe exit routes, so that in case of problem at one route, uh, you can go for another one. Vertical ventilation allows the product of combustion to travel up and out. So, in this particular module, we have discussed different aspects of electrostatic electricity, dip piping, relaxation, ventilation aspect, etc. Again, uh, you can have a look for further reading of these references. Thank you very much.